Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Well, well, well. Today we have another Harman Kardon. Uh, this time it's CD401. And last time we had CD491. Alright. Uh, it has a minimal difference. Same layouts, same screwdriver needed to adjust the calibration levels. Only bias is easily accessible. So, electronic auto search. <laughs> Interesting what this means. React mute right here and eject right between them. Uh, okay, interesting design. <laughs> Let's see the heads. So, you see it's single capstan design. Uh, record playback head has some. Um, I'm not sure what this. You see this like black layer on it, so it's I believe some protection from there. And as you may see, as this head remains in a better shape than a rice head, which is a rare case. So usually a rice, a rice head has made from ferrite, and this time we have sand dust ferrite head. All right. Let's power on. Okay. Lights on. Capstan rolling. All right. It's a good sign. We have some life in it. Let's insert the tape and see what it can do with this tape. Fast forward. It tries to on, but nothing happens. Rewind the same. All right. So it looks like uh, real motor doesn't work. All right. Let me open it. Let's start from the simple things. And then we will see how it's perform. See you in a moment. And here I have it open. Let's take a quick look uh, in the design. So, as you may see, this tape transport has relay. So, it's, it's before Sankyo. It has a bigger real motor. And these capacitors looks like original. And there are additional one, but I'm quite not sure that they designed it this way. So, probably there was some noise coming in. Uh, this motor which doesn't work now so we will need to check power and here so see this board is broken it does, doesn't hold on this audio board anymore really those pins you see those are i believe it's it's not working Considering this capacitor and this capacitor is here, its razor was upgraded or it didn't survive and had or its factory. I don't know. See how many pots we have here. I believe it's records amplifier. Here is uh, Dolby chips. Another Dolby chips and levels. All right. Looks to be not over complicated, but let me figure out. So I probably will remove front panel to see how I can remove this tape transport because I see it fix it here. Maybe somewhere else. All right. See you in a moment. All right, guys, I'm working on disassembling and it's appeared to be not a very simple process. So I just disconnected these two large connectors from the board here. Then wires goes <laughs> below tape transport and behind tape transport. And we have two more. One has connector right here, but the other one is just soldered it here. So that's the process. Not easy, really. And we still like didn't get to the point. I see that tape transport 
you see the one screw from here, other screw from here. So pretty strange design how they assembled it. All right, let me see what's next. See soon. Well, guys, I'm continuing, and it appears to be not a very simple procedure. So I d disconnected this flat cable. So they have pretty nice connectors. I removed two screws from the top, two screws from here, from the bottom, and two screws from here. And technically, we should have front panel released and tape transfer may be released but there are a couple things so first of all they are connected from this side with three screws so i don't have access here so i'm still looking like how to get there so there are three screws to disconnect tape transports uh but we have everything is installed right here so should i remove these ports these connectors and then like this board will be released because as you may see uh it has resistors installed on this cable and i'm afraid to break anything like the, everything is so fragile so many capacitors attach it everywhere you see <laughs> these two guys uh I believe it's everything factory, you see, but they are not in original design. These capacitors here, that's not a good design. It's it's kind of laboratory experimental <laughs> deck, really. Why? And this makes me puzzle. So. It has been, it should be designed better, like this right here. I'm not sure why they did it. Oh yeah, and there are more connectors from the top. Here we have, you see, and uh, wires, uh, head wires. So this record and rise. So they go on the other side they go around and go here on this board and solder it right here wow so i was wrong it, 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 it's probably not the record amplifier because it's it's done different way i see here like bio generator this big box isolated but I have no idea. I need to read service manual. I need to understand how father did assemble everything because it's not obvious. And let me see. And we this brown wires. This goes from the head. And we have also another wire. So uh-huh. No, this too is from playback head. This two brown is from record head and, and gray one from rice head. Okay, so I was technically right. So we have record amplifier in this area. No, yeah. But there's a playback. So they go, go, go around all the deck and on the board right there. Wow. And that's our broken traces. You see the legs like crazy. So the board was not connected in any other way so that's how the traces get broken oh. okay let's see if i will restore it or just trash it see you soon okay guys i'm continuing this assembly i desoldered wires from the playback head from here uh record heads one here one here and the rice head just in the middle now I'm removing cable from here, three pin, the one right there, two pin, and it gets from here in the middle, I believe it's light. Now these wires, they go underneath, uh-huh, these two, um, solder it right here, these brown wires. And they get to this button. Okay, really. 
and these two get from the light and I, where does it go I believe they will come up somewhere here uh, somewhere in this area all right so let me see in more details yeah I don't like design I don't like how they made it it's it really looks very experimental not production ready deck see you soon okay this red blue wire comes here the blue connected just directly with transformer and the red is connected to the uh, most right pin uh, yeah now you see how they did it uh, all right moving on well guys <laughs> actually i'm reading service manual right here and following all the steps and i still screaming of how these guys designed it just to remove these leds right indicators i i it, this fine like these two connectors gets here and this counter board so it's quite easy right uh this connector it's leds it goes here but to remove this board we have to remove this board LEDs with two screws. This side light with two screws. And then here, like uh, here, here, and there, like in very hardly accessible places, like another three screws. And only after that, <laughs> you can pull it out. Really, I don't like how they designed it. And now I have to squeeze and remove those screws do you have idea how, how to remove those lower screws? What kind of screwdriver should go there? <clears throat> really. I'm close to just trash it, really. Guys, it's it's really, really poorly designed deck. We'll see. See you soon. Hey guys, I'm celebrating victory. I pulled out this tape transport out of this deck. And it's it's a nightmare. So you see design side panels, intermediate <laughs> P bars or like N bars, um, everything like uh, you see holes like really really poorly. Oh, it's it's not a manufacturing culture, guys. It's it's like. Laboratory deck, yeah, I can understand. We, we tried, we assembled, but then we, <laughs> we need to, to make it better. All right, see you soon. I hope it will work. All right, guys, let's take a look at this tape transfer. Pretty basic, simple. Okay, it's even done using pinch rollers. That's the guides which needs to be lubricated because they are a little bit tough. I just feel it. Okay. Pinch roller needs to be replaced. Let's take a closer look on the heads. Heads looks like low wear. Oh, let me see what we have from behind. So that the wires from real motor. Okay. And this is let me remove this board so we can see better where they go. interconnection board when we have just one connector here there's two sensors click pretty well that's record protection and chrome tape okay electromagnets
I believe there is idler, pretty small one. Okay, let's see if this motor works at all. Let's give it six volts, I believe. And see if it will rotate. Okay, six volts. These two pins here. It rotates, so probably problem with electronics additionally. I hear it's rotating, okay. That's a good sign, so motor is not dead. Now let's see what is dead. So let's disassemble, loop everything, because it's one way to disassemble and assemble this deck, really. Lots of wires which had no connectors. Uh, okay, let's remove the damper. access to the motor, capstan motor, capstan belt, and capstan itself, come on, let's and it holds also this <laughs> relay, <laughs> mamma mia, and two more, I need extender, Three and the last one. Very inconvenient, so there is no end goal. <laughs> okay, perfect. Right. That's the old belt. Pulley. Oops. Magnet part, and that's a uh, huge capstan. Really. All right. Uh, Pushers fall out, probably under some of the screws to set the level of this metal board. All right, now here we go. No washers. No, we have one low friction here. Everything is dry, like. There's two of them. One is clear and one is low friction. Come on, go here. Done. Everything is really dry, I just feel like Capstan is very dry. Okay, here is the jury, is the modes. Back okay, so with the small one and the big magnets, what is pulling? 
yeah, the brakes probably. You need to open from the front to see how it's working. Oh yeah, I like the design of the tape transports. Nothing critical. Everything from metal, that's a good sign. Let me remove the real motor. Let's see the idler and how it's designed. Uh huh, yeah, this board falling out here there's transistor and there are heat sink so this transistor I didn't get it what it does transistor two resistors two wires and connector what this could be <laughs> do you know you may check by service manual what this piece is for. Here is a belt. Wow. And little idler. And another idler. Come on. Now let's power on this motor one more time and let's see how it works. Okay, belt still work after all these years. But idlers are dry like hell. They they crystallized. I can adjust it. So they are breaking up into pieces. Belt is still tight, really, after all these years. Not so tight as I liked it to be, but it still works. Okay, let me see if I have such Latini idlers. I have a large set of different sizes. Yeah, it's, it's my sleep a little bit, this belt. Alright, well, let's see. Let's see soon. Alright, everyone, here I'm continuing. I found that I have a brand new teeny belt. It fits pretty well. That's the old one. It's not so stretchy anymore and more relaxed. I was able to get an idler to this reel. And you see the older idler just split into two parts and it's, it's cracking. And the central idler, it's so thin and it's, you see, it, it just cracks into pieces, you see, it's, it don't work anymore. And I don't have such thin idler, so even if I can assemble this part, I still need one, one here. And I need a really thin one. I tried th this piece, but it's thick. I need like twice smaller, probably I need to uh, shred the upper part make it smaller we'll see i'm still thinking how to proceed with it such a nice looking deck such a big problems really design from 1970s that everything was experimental they they tried they make a lego <laughs> they tried to build let's see don't blame me much but you see yourself, you would need to also replace this belt. It's it's still you know, like not not pretty, but better than the other one. It's still stretchy. But this one, that's almost no stretchy anymore. Right, so probably this was replaced later. Let me see what I can do 
I need like to, to shred. It, it doesn't work if I will fit it here. It's too thick. I cannot fit uh, the reel after. So you see, if I do that, the reel will not fit. You really need to cut quite a few. Okay, let me see what I can do. See you soon. Okay, guys. First attempt. Uh, I use a Dremel tool and light sign paper, and looks like uh, I almost achieved what I need. So, but uh, in some positions I'm overshot. You see, it's it's not. I need a little bit bigger size. So. I have to start over again, use a similar ruler of the small size, this or this. I get it too thin, so we need a little bit thicker than that. Alright, so let's start over. See you soon. Hey guys, I tried multiple ideas. I tried to uh, uh, reduce size of the idlers. It didn't work. Idlers were too thin because there is like more space, you see, idler is thinner than the rubber. And finally, I come to idea, I'm using a heat shrink tube. So I cut a slice, put it on, it was just a little bit more heated and it sits well. And now we have a good and reliable friction. Okay, now I will be assembling uh, this part is back, validate everything and hope it will work good with new belt, new idler. Now we have a friction, that's good. Alright, it's puzzled me like for two hours maybe, I tried multiple stuff. Now let's see how it will perform, see you soon. Hey everyone, so... Here I'm assembling the back side of the transport. Sorry, let me put you on stand. And I continue on the front side. And I told you that it's prototype. So like, even the front screws which hold this uh, cover, they sit on these stands which are not fixed. Come on, <laughs> guys, really? This is ridiculous. So everything is prototype. <laughs> now I like to see what is uh, with the brakes, right? And you see, like, yeah, everything is like uh, here. It was holding the same screw by the same screw. Come on, <laughs> it's just like. I cannot explain what they did here. All right, so this is the light and the color. That's how it works now. So, uh-huh, brakes will release only when it's pushed to the very, very top. All right, and how they released. So you see now our mechanism we push and motor works and everything should work like that. Uh, how brakes get pulled up for fast forward and wind. That's not the case. How we get into fast forward mode? Alright. Uh huh. So when magnet holds, it gets into fast forward divide mode. Okay. And when it releases, it gets into the play mode when it does short click
and pulls the heads up and they stay like that uh -huh. and still it's, it's not fully right. so release there is a drop all right let me play more with this transfer so this electromagnet it releases the brakes okay you see here at the same time it pushes this lever here ah there is separate electromagnet okay now i see it this one changes modes for play and this one is pushes the brakes okay now now it's obvious how it's work and now you see after this magnet worked we stay in the play mode like that and as it is this play mode disengages okay done works smoothly releases all right now i see how it works so everything is fine all right the only thing I like to check before assembling then it was forward rewind works properly. Now uh, let me solder two wires so I would not need to hold with my hand because I would need to also hold the brakes down to make sure we can see how everything works now. See you in a moment. Okay, and here I release the brakes and in one direction I feel that it works pretty smoothly. Well, this requires 9 volts to give a fast forward torque and if I will go to 5 volts it gives light and uh, playback torque All right. now let me reverse wires and I'm clicking to release brakes and let's see how it will work in the opposite direction yeah. works smoothly and now I go to 9 volts and it works smoothly and should rewind pretty well let's install tape just to see how it will work Okay, try. And it ends of the tape, so with the highest torque and everything works pretty smooth. Good. Now reversing wires. And let's see how it feels. Fast forward. And it's eight volts. It's nine volts. Now I'm not sure if it's nine or twelve volts motor, so works pretty smooth. No problem. That's a good sign. Releasing brakes. Oh okay. yeah, I believe now I can assemble and this will be a long story considering how everything is, is done on this deck. between the stand and skew all right so it's way too many hands needed to assemble i'm not sure how they did it so that's the stand that's the skew
Come on. Prototype. <laughs> oh my gosh. Program. And now it sits well. One side assembled. <laughs> wow. Uh. I can understand when, like, uh, there were no tools or whenever, but uh, these years it was already quite developed. And Harman Kardon, I believe it's United States company. Can you believe it? So that they've been doing worse than Japanese guys. Oh, assembled. Now we need to adjust how quick it will go out. Is this screw? Hold it a little bit. Now it works smoothly. Oh, good. So, what do you do in this? Let's see. I still see that it's not fully engaged somehow. I need to check more. This one. Okay, clean it, loop everything. So remember these two stands here and one stands on top. Now it goes smoothly up. Now let's see. I'm imitating electromagnet, so I'm clicking here and rotating flywheel. Like you see, it, it engages heads up. Now they stay in the top position. You see pinch roller moving. There are good friction between pinch roller and cup stand. Everything works and engaged. Now I'm release this lever here and it will drop heads down. All right, good. So we now clear. I can desolder these additional wires I made for the real motor. You can also check the capstan motor, but it was working fine. I just lubricated everything. So we should be good. All right, see you soon. Hey guys, I'm continue assembling this prototype. I cannot say that it's normal deck. Everything is made uh, with such strange decisions. All pieces are like assembled at the very last moment, I believe. You see, I have to collect like how many? Four pieces together to align it, to make sure that they will sit, work together. So tape transport, chassis, and this piece which holds indicator are assembled together. Come on, what's wrong with this hole? It's been like how much time already? So we just don't want go here there, the screw. Let me try to assemble more parts and then let's see. Uh, which one's this two? Yes, this two goes here. That's the only deck which I, I wanted to throw out, really. Screws don't go back, <laughs> as you may see, at least easily. Need to find a position. Uh, 
everything built from so many pieces each piece is like not on its own place and so on now we need these two wires go here around all this bs part here this connector right here All right. two more screws down here and these short screws others longer screws different sizes different pieces like uh, you have to remember everything <laughs> It looks nice, but if people would know what's inside, <laughs> I'm not sure that I've been buying it. Like, uh, like 100 capacitors, solder it on top of the board, uh, it's a lot. Come on, no, go other way, <laughs> wires. Okay. No, I will zip tie them later. Come on. Now we still need to understand how to assemble this part oh, back because the screw is resistant. So don't want to go this way. Don't want to go this way. I'm not sure I will use a little bit of force because it's ridiculous. All right. This wire goes here in between, you see, like that. <laughs> As this goes on top, I still would need to solder quite a few. I need to remember. From where they come. Sorry. Uh, next small from here. And you may see how convenient it to screw. And it's don't will go again. But, uh, I cannot catch and go. I need to find a small plastic piece which here uh, which just fall inside. Now I need to install it back into the hole here. I believe at this moment they give up because they could not put the screwdriver themselves in. <laughs> we decided just to use plastic pin. I have to use so many tools to assemble this deck. ridiculous so I 
that is used to one wheel go st straight and other wheel just push from the sides going yeah and now part number two plastic pin which will extend the other plastic parts you see how convenient to work with this deck Never ever, even from 1970s, I have seen such deck with so many disassembly assembly issues. Okay, all right. Now that's the head wires. That's the wires from the indicator. Let's install it back. See how convenient it is. So here we have buttons which goes inside the indicator. <laughs> oh, come on. Here we need to get angle to get underneath the spins because everything is attached in a pretty strange way oh my gosh you cannot just like connect and screw like other manufacturers you just don't go come on almost there Gotcha. Imagine how sexy it was to disassemble and assemble on the factory. Uh, now we have to put in screws. One is right here. Very convenient position. But other two even worse. Okay. One is on top, which you could not see unless you pull up the deck. Yeah, I cannot see it, I cannot get in. Somewhere there. <laughs> gotcha. And another one here. We need to push this wire here. Oh. Imagine how convenient. If I even cannot catch the angle. <laughs> and that's the instruction says like how to assemble and disassemble this deck service manual okay button works that's a good sign next connector here okay and this holds my this metal piece here now counter 
one side. Try to not break this board because it's fix it in the middle. <laughs> okay, connect it. Now these LEDs should go here like that. You will use two screws, create a short one to fit them up. Now, this side light And this wire from the side light goes through the whole deck right here. <laughs> uh, sometimes I, I, I just lost. Well, how do we do this? Come on. It should be easy. I just didn't go back. I have to use force to, to get a new thread for them. Same with Nakamichi. So this is a skew which you have to touch a couple times. All right, we still have the playback board amplifier broken. We still have a way to go. Let's me don't use these wires. Let me connect those connectors back and let's see what comes next, okay? See you in a moment. Well guys, and I continue assembly and I cannot install this connector because this switch just don't give me a room to do it. So I was able to pull it out, but I cannot install it back. So I have to remove the switch. I tell you that this prototype. Really? Right. Now we can install it back. Okay. This one goes right here on the knees. Done. That's the records and the rice for the wires. The three I will be soldering this light wires goes here and these two wires gets here it needs to be soldered again because they've been like uh, screw on top so some of them solder it some of them screw on top it's really not consistent I believe after you will watch this video, you would never buy this deck. <laughs> Unless you are a masochist. It's vertical. Where is the front panel? Yeah, it's vertical like that. Done. So, only soldering job left for the wires. And I need to understand how to fix this board because it will continue to break the traces. So we need to fix it somehow to the board because that's, that's just ridiculous. No way it will hold by itself. 
Is this one is the same technically, but it has more pins. Those just six pins, and this like a dozen pins, twice more, so it holds better. Okay, so let me fix it and I see you there. All right, guys, I installed the front panel, and it was so painful process, you wouldn't believe me. Like it's been like six times why I was installing it almost there, something doesn't match. Again, like research what else and so on. And all those pins like buttons, they, they just like don't don't get into the holes. Like you can get these ones because you have access, but other ones here it's uh, try and catch so you should use some tools to get each button in the hole and then like it doesn't work then monitor didn't work then like uh, a little bit uh, this microphone inputs were misaligned so it didn't sit fully then uh, this one guy yeah, headphones misaligned and so on and uh, going in circles because like you have to get every single button perfect and ideal working so it, it, it just work. All right, now let's see what we get here. I just demagnetized it heads, so ready to go. Fast forward. Rewind. Play. Nothing plays. Uh, so, your tape, all right, let's find something. I'm not sure if I have something on this tape. Not sure. I soldered this board back, so technically it should work. Let's see if the other tape. This one, I, I know it has recording, so it's a metal. Yeah, we play in both channels. Finally, I was screaming a lot on designers on this deck, really. This one made me hard. Really, I don't remember, probably like the Akai F31, that's another perfect deck which uh, gave me a full month of headache because uh, you, you don't know like unless you screw the one single screw which gets ground uh, to the system control board it doesn't work and it was not really not obvious because all voltages goes like out of order nothing works properly and so on all right uh -huh. We're playing. Uh, we even have some green light here. When it's source, you see? All right, let me see. Let me tune it and I hope I would be able to demo it to you. Luckily, we already have it playing. All right. Let's see if it's gonna record. Recording, calibration tone, yeah, recording, and bias, uh -huh. so here I'm adding bias, you see, it's not even between channels, All right, let me see, I believe it's really under biased. On this tape you should not have so such a lot of bias. And here is the tones. And that's the adjustments left right. So teeny screwdriver gets to the work. Someone already expanded this hole. It's 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 bigger. This one is smaller. So use the some big screwdriver. And give it to work. Mm 
Okay. I cannot make it work with this screwdriver. We need something different. Let me see if this one can fit. No. Uh -huh. That's maybe a puzzle. This one. Uh -huh. Okay. That's. I can reduce a little bit. Yeah, I see left channel zero. Now that's the right channel. No. No, both channels at zeros. Let me see. I don't need any more. And bias. Bias. Technically, it's just too much bias. And on the right channel, when I go to the right, and I go to the left, you see, it's, it tries to find it. All right, it's even recording. Great news. Let's make it running finally. See you soon. Hey guys, adventure with this deck continues. So uh, here it plays slow and it plays 2750 gears. And I just read service manual. It says that this motor has adjustments on this motor itself. There is a hole. I tried to get in, so there is nothing. There is a hole you get to the rotor. Uh, and there is just adjustment of the take up torque right here for this motor, for real motor, and that's it. I don't have choice, I need to remove this cover and see probably it's installed it incorrectly. And uh, hole should be in a different position for this board. I'm so tired with this deck. It's... Okay, now, now we cannot turn it off. I need to see what's wrong with it. On, off. Uh, I hate designs they did for this deck. It plays nice, like high frequencies are there, but how they did it, it's, it's really out of order. All right, let me try to open this cover and see what's inside this motor. See you soon. Here, guys, I opened the cover. Pots is actually here, but uh, Pot sits very close to the rotor. A little bit like you put your screwdriver further in, right? Are you here? That's what was happening. Right now I'm adjusted to 3002 gears. 3000, so keeps well. All right, let me close it and let's continue tuning. Here guys, I'm continue testing. Uh, I set proper speed. Next point was I had to deoxidize all pots here. I use it uh, my liquid. I use this BW100 to wash them and then work them out. So works well now. No more crackles uh, sounds. What else? I mentioned that due to this mechanism, like it uses capstan to pull up heads up. When it starts, it's uh, you can hear that it's speed up the tape like a little bit after start. So so far everything works. Levels looks to be fine. I didn't check more yet, but uh, I've been looking into the high frequencies and looks like this port made me a problem um, because then like I switch it from the frequency sweep tape to the music tape and I see it's crackling, right channel was disappearing, um, like high frequencies lost and it was like fully disconnected and so on. And that's where I deoxidized them and now it should work much better. So let's see together. Let me install the frequency sweep tape if it will work now because the right channel was losing highs. 
and all in all i didn't like what i've seen even if it sounds nice i didn't like what i've seen and i check it up so it's 120 microseconds equalization so that's our levels it's in phase yeah but levels drop let me see how much so on 400 we have minus eight 600 we have wow well, drop by six decibel already and right channel does it more left drops four decibel in total five decibel on 10 kilohertz and six decibel on 12 and right channel is just catastrophic it's minus 15 decibel almost to the 400 level let's go back to 10 kilohertz and let's see to get 11 10 so minus 6 and minus 10 decibel i don't like what i see let me check the tape pass maybe something related to that uh we'll see so far i'm not impressed see some okay here i continue i am cannot use mirror tape but come on this is how it works with uh, like I use it vision tape when I can see how tape is goes and it goes pretty fine. Let's rewind to the beginning. Head sits properly. Everything looks fine. So I'm not sure. Maybe missing high frequencies in this deck. Let me see if I can fix it or not. See soon okay a little bit stabilized now left right channel works smoothly and shows the same results but we have a drop and it's drop like uh, reminds me like uh, different correction like 120 and 70 because it drops quickly like uh, up to 3 kilohertz it's already minus 4 decibel and then to minus 15 it goes to minus 7 decibel and that's where i'm measuring and i see decibels and that's where i'm not happy with the results and if i will switch you see 120 70 it changes by a couple decibels you see so that's uh, 120 and that's 70 and tape is 120 so we see this four decibel difference on the high frequencies i'm not sure what else i can do it's type one proper equalization no dolby everything should be fine technically i cannot hear it's for some reason like when i listen to this deck i cannot hear these problems when I listen to pre-recorded the tapes, they sound well. Again, like same story as with the Pioneer. I'm not sure what they put there and how they did it. Maybe they have, I need to check schematic. Maybe they implemented something pretty interesting, like, like Pioneer did flex system. All right, so. We play. All frequencies are good. All are there. I'm not sure what's going on. I need to check. So far, everything plays fine. You can hear yourself, right? Boy, let me send more. And it should be metal tape. sounds good all right let me play more with this deck it's already eight full my day like i've been it's seven hours i started at 9 a.m saturday and it's 4 p.m already really 
way too much time. See you soon, guys. Guys, I told you this deck is prototype. I didn't mention before. <laughs> That's how the door connects. Like that. <laughs> Sorry, can't hold myself. It plays really nice. All frequencies there, I'm not sure why it's not measured properly and what's going on. See you soon. So I pull it up another tape, which has been recorded on DR2. All right, so we have equalization normal. Playback uh, 400 gears. We have minus two, minus three, that's about here. All right, fast forward. One kilogears is already minus three, minus four. Three kilogears is already, you see, minus six, minus seven. And six kilogears is <laughs> minus nine, minus ten between left and right channel. I cannot explain it, so my test tape shows that uh, frequency response drops. There's a second time happening. Same as with uh, Pioneer. I recently restored a two-head deck. It was showing the same results for me. So let me connect uh, my audio interface and let's see if it's a problem of my devices or what season. Okay, guys, I'm connected my audio interface and it confirms what I hear, that everything appears to be fine. That's a sweep tape, so I see we're going on the minus 30 decibel level. And it goes to 400 gears, 2 kilogears, 3, 4, 5. And it keeps level, it's not dropping. 10, you see, 10 keeps going farther. 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So we have levels. So heads are in good shape. That's a good sign. I'm not sure why it's connected to oscilloscope was showing those reduction on the high frequencies. Quite not sure what the, maybe the reason. There is nothing which I can, can say about it. I will check. What's going on maybe this deck is affected by oscilloscope but uh, even if i will switch to the level see 400 gears it's minus five here that's a bell currently and it's dropped yeah here you see levels dropping minus three comparing to the level we've been here it was four decibel five decibel I'm not sure <laughs> what's what's wrong. It's minus five decibel on 15 kilogears comparing to the 400 gears we've been here. So this this shows the same results as my oscilloscope and VTVM. You see, levels are growing, and when we get to 400 gears, they will get here to this line. Mm. But on this chart, I don't see differences. I'm puzzled a little bit, so let me think more about it.
I decided to test few more tapes and this tape is a white noise recorded on Sony 555 ESJ okay and you see so there is a slope between uh, 400 gears and 10 kilogears let me zoom in so 400 gears we are at minus 16 level and at 10 kilogears we are at minus 20 level so it's, it's 4 decibel just right here so it's, it's confirms the all measurements we did so far but i quite not sure why it's uh, um, reduces like it's all near and what is more interesting why i cannot hear it because when i listen in the music tapes they found sounds pretty fine for me i'm not sure what's how they did it and what's wrong okay so i believe i'm done with uh, playback measurements so it is as it is it sounds really nice better than i expected a little bit better than the 491 i fix it maybe because it has in a better shape and they are look like that all right so i will start tuning recording see you soon well okay, guys so i'm about to start calibration of recording and i see that someone was here i never seen such charts <laughs> when recording on type one tape really uh low noise like everything should be fine like and here is the source all right and that's how we're recording and we have way too many ports and these ports are not marked and they not correspond to the service manual and boards so service manual don't, don't have these two boards so it's it's way different it's schematic is different so i'm to still trying like to understand how to tune it up and considering this pause considering the text on the board here and text on the board i believe here that someone was trying to already adjust it <laughs> but <laughs> without these tools you never know what was you adjusted right so that's where we will be working to bring it up because this five kilogears looks pretty crazy for me all right i hope i would be able to identify all the spots what they're doing what frequency response they're correcting because there are different capacitors right so i believe this should be correcting like different response and these three are like a low noise uh, then uh ferrum chrome no no like ferrum chrome and chrome ports and these two are for metal adjustments <laughs> really wow that's a lot but i identify so these two white ports that's a playback level i'm adjusted it was just a little bit off uh, and uh, this deck has a dolby level at zeros all right it's fine uh that's the record levels the one here and the other white one here the other are frequency response ports then there is output levels which are off you see they are in different position let me put them in the middle I believe i would need to start from the beginning put everything in the middle and start tuning, <laughs> see you.